time times sine of x. Now here's where we replace. We take out the cosine squared x, and instead we're going to put in 1 plus cosine 4x. Be careful about that 4. We're doubling the angle again. So instead of 2x, we need 4x. All over 2, and all of that times sine of x. Okay, now most of this beginning stuff stays the same. We're going to distribute our sine over here though. So we get sine of x plus cosine 4x sine x all over 2. Again, most of the beginning stays the same. We get sine of x minus 2 cosine 2x sine x plus sine of x over 2 plus, we're going to split up this fraction, co cosine 4x sine x all over 2. And lastly, because we have a sign here and we have a sign here, we can rewrite this sign as 2 sine x over 2. Combine the two signs, we get 3 sine x over 2 minus 2 cosine 2x sine x plus cosine 4x sine x all over 2. And we're finally done. Quite a lot of work, but honestly if you can at least get it down to here where we no longer have any powers greater than 1 for sine or cosine, I'd be happy. I think we'll call it quits there today. And we'll continue with our half angle formulas and our product to sum, sum, and sum to product identities in the next half of this section. So for this part, just make sure that you know and you're familiar with our double angle formulas and our power reducing half angle formulas.